Yeah, I've worked on the FDPS development course for more than 10 years, um, and so I have a lot of experience of uh, working on this course. I also teach on uh, master's courses. I'm the convener of the Aiden development course, so it gives me a chance to see exactly what uh, FDPS students on development need to go on to master's, and it gives me an opportunity to introduce FDPS students on development to former students who are now on the master's. So um, my role is both FDPS and on the master's course, which works quite well in bringing experiences from both sides together. Yeah, I uh, used to work for an NGO, Action Aid, for uh, four years. So I have experience of working in the Sudan, in uh, the Gambia, um, in Tanzania. And I also worked for the British Council in Bulgaria for some time. So I've seen um, quite a lot of Africa and uh, European development uh, projects and development programs. And um, I also then do consultancies for development organizations, which I advise on projects, advise on programs. So I have practical experiences mm. as well as theory. Um, the main topics are split into three sections. To section A is eight weeks, section B is eight weeks, and section C is just one week less at seven weeks. So section A, uh, we look at key issues that affect countries' development. Um, so examples would be gender, for example, uh, relationships between men and women, how that helps a society or hinders a society. Um, we also look at education as a key issue, the role of education in the development of a society. And very fundamentally, we look at how to measure development. If you say, oh, this country is so advanced, this country is so backward, really? In, in what way? We would question that. In, you know, how, how would you actually use criteria, use indicators to see how a, how a country is uh, developing uh, strongly or, or, or weakly, perhaps? <laughs> purpose is to show um, how development of a society occurs um, through institutions and of course the obvious one there will be the state, how a government can affect a country and help it or actually lead to it uh, struggling to develop if it's a bad government with corruption and with inefficiencies. And then not just the state uh, as an institution, but also the citizens' institutions, the non-government organizations that citizens form, such as environmental organizations, we look at their role in, in development. And we would also look um, at global institutions and their effect on, on, on countries. So that would be the World Bank, the World Trade Organization, the IMF. And finally, of course, the role of markets, you know, the free market or whether markets should be influenced by the state. I think it's that we try to combine theory and practice. So we would look at theories, we would look at concepts such as gender, concepts around population, around trade, but we always have case studies. We would always look at how this is applied in practice, so we look at different countries, different regions around the world. So students don't just see uh, theories and concepts in the abstract, they really see how they would play out uh, in particular case studies, which a lot of students seem to enjoy. I think it's that we get students from all around the world, from every part of the world, and as they gain confidence, you see a lot of passionate debates, students start to develop their own ideas about, say for example, microfinance. We've had a student go on to work on a microfinance project herself. We've had a student from China, for example, gone on to work uh, with volunteers trying to help uh, develop textiles amongst in, uh, indigenous minorities in China. So you see that interest, you see that confidence as students discuss um, with more and more knowledge and with more and more passion and then they go and take that into the field and do some, some great work which they you know, bring back to me and tell me about. Mm -hmm.